All right, everybody. This is hopefully a lot sooner than the last couple of updates and everything else. I'm doing today basically a difference from the last video I did where I used GIMP and GMEC to do some um, editing of photos. I'm going to show you a couple plugins that you know I use from uh, depends on what I'm doing that are commercial and use hardware acceleration and may get the job done a little quicker. This is not putting GIMP or GMIC down, none of that. I'm just ch showing you in this video the difference between plugins that use hardware acceleration and some, and the ones that GIMP and GMIC use, which does not. They use your computer's uh, CPU computational power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you using Adobe Elements 13. I don't have 14 yet. Not quite in the budget for that yet, but hopefully soon. And I'm going to show you at full resolution, or on my other video you can look at where I'm talking about GMEC. I actually reduced the video, I mean, the, not the video, I'm sorry guys, the photo down by 50% in order for these to try to not hurt me so bad as far as in running the plugins. This one here, I'm going to leave it full resolution straight out of the iPhone camera. And what's pictured here is again what I affectionately called in the other video the Jeep from Hell. We're going to use it for our fun today. I'm also going to make a, a, a duplicate of the layer so we, when we get started we don't damage the original. Now, a thing, couple things here. GMIC is a collection of filters inside of one, basically. And what I'm going to show you are going to be different filters from different companies, mainly Alien Skin and Topaz. I am not paid by either one of these to endorse their products. I'm just showing you in real time hopefully how fast it can be because remember on my GMIC one it took a while for it to do a pencil sketch on a reduced sized photo so without further ado let's go ahead and get started here one of the things I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to again duplicate my layer here in just a second is I'm going to want to cut this out now the bad thing is about Adobe Elements besides its big brother Photoshop Photoshop has a pen tool kind of like what GIMP does Elements does not. Um, they've been refining the refined edge brush and things like that. I mean, you know, on the new version, there's a refined edge brush. On my version, I just got a quick selection tool with the refined edge command. But, you know, maybe, you know, you got something that's a little bit more complex and a little bit harder. One of the plugins I use now, everybody has their own opinion on plugins, and this is mine. I kind of like the plugin that I have um, that's called Remask, it's made by Topaz Labs. And I'm going to use that against this photo to show you the difference between its extraction capability and the one that was presented in GMIC under the contours menu. Excuse me. So I'm going to right click this. I'm going to say duplicate layer. And I'll just leave this alone like that as that's fine. Now, with that selected, I'm going to go to filter, topaz labs, and remask. And now it's going to start up Remask. And here we go. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use Remask. I'll quickly go over it. Um, in Remask, unlike in the Contours plugin for foreground extraction, what you're going to do here is you're going to paint colors and fill in colors to denote what you want, what you want to take away, and what you want the thing to try to compute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually... Um, do it this way first. I'm going to go ahead and use the compute brush, which is the blue one. I'm going to increase my brush size by using the bracket keys if necessary. Yep. Because I'm going to do this like it's super quick, guys. And what I'm going to do is minimize it. And I'm just going to paint around the object I want to keep. I want a barrier of what I want to save. And I'm kind of going half on the object, half off the object here. Is I'm, I'm telling it that this is an edge that I'm looking for. Now, if I was using my Wacom tablet, that would probably make this edge a lot cleaner. I'm going to go back with the brush real quick because I selected a little too much of this area here. Go back to the brush and keep on selecting. And as you see, I'm just doing a very, very rough selection. Again, if I have the ability to use a tool, like a pen tool, for vehicle extractions, I would probably do it that way 
the reason why is because you know the human eye is better than any plug-in you know I, I love my topaz but you know the human eye is better than anything that can be computed go plug-in let's say I'm going to zoom in by rolling up my mouse wheel and I'm going to move up here I need to press the space bar and pull up Again, this is not the very best selection I would have actually taken a lot more care in extracting this than I am right now lower my brush size a little bit because I want to try to get inside this vehicle's luggage rack here alright I pretty much went around the object what I want to do now is take the the fill tool and click on everything that I don't want whoop here we go undo that need to zoom in because obviously I did not click the right thing there nope try to do this again I must be clicking on that profile but let's see what happens anyway so after I do this real quick I compute the mask and I can already see that there's things that didn't select right like the window right here so I could just go in with my brush and just kind of click and that's the cool thing about this is I can just click and kind of fill in the gaps but let's get a side-by-side -side view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show what I'm keeping the actual extraction the extracted object and as you can see it did a pretty fast fantastic job and I'm just using these brushes now to kind of tweak in what it missed or what it wasn't sure of now again there there's a lot to this plug-in um, I'm not going to go into detail about it. that's not what this is about now if everybody wants me to get into a little bit more detail on on this plugins use then awesome we'll get into it um, right now I'm just kind of using the brush to, and you can either click or you can click and drag like I'm doing right here to kind of tighten things up and I mean fairly quickly here I've already gotten a pretty decent mask I'll back out here in just a second and show you guys that I'm just gonna scroll out on my mouse wheel you know it's not perfect but I mean you know look at that for just a quick little selection at full resolution it didn't take that puppy long to uh, render out yeah it's a little chunky right now with the selections because I am running screen capture software but you know with a decent computer this thing will run pretty good and not give you the slowdowns like I'm experiencing right now but you know really quickly here I'm just going through here and kinda trying to clean up my edge a little bit and it's computing and okay it's getting some of the, the gas pumps behind it and do this in short strokes actually works better than that long stroke I did I will tell you that if you guys do invest in this plug-in um, but anyways I'm just going to do this real quick because again you know this is not really a masking tutorial I'm just showing you the the difference in processing power between the two and there we go I mean you know I can refine this at the top here we can do that real quick and then I want to move on to the the uh, artistic looking ones but I said it's not perfect but I mean it for for what little bit of labor we did on this I mean it's 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 pretty fast and the thing is about this plugin uh, guys and girls we don't have to uh, necessarily click on the mask over here we can click on what we're trying to keep and what we're trying to delete and just kind of touch it like that and as you see it's removing the parts where I'm clicking on where I'm kind of clicking a little too far but because it's now removing the top of the Jeep you can see over here also where it's kind of gray and anywhere you got gray you got you know differences in opacity and I'm going to uh, keep going with this 
there we go over here and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit get this in here and then I'm going to say everything in there try to remove that and it did a pretty good job right there on one shot so this is actually a pretty good example of you know this plugin actually working pretty well and then I'm just going to say okay for now because again I'm not trying to get picture perfect with this I'm just trying to show proof of concept and if I kill the background layer there's our Jeep again you can see around the tires around the underneath the uh, the uh, panel there below the doors yeah it's still a little translucent but again I'm just showing real quick the differences between one that's using CPU power and one that's using CPU slash GPU power to do the same thing so I'm going to undo this and now we're going to go on to the next thing okay the next filter I'm going to run is going to be kind of one of two of them because it, it doesn't really matter I'm going to use snap art 4 by alien skin and what I'm going to do here is uh, go into the like the pencil type thing so let's go up to effects tour here just to get a preview of what all the plugin can do now we'll go to pencil sketch and just see how that looks but see how much quicker this is I mean I'm just clicking on it and just that was in real time guys with the full resolution image I have not downscaled this this is no trickery on my end as far as in trying to compress the time none of it that was how instantaneous this thing works because it's using acceleration so we're like okay you know that's what we're after so now I'm gonna go down to pencil sketch open this up and then again you just give it a couple seconds to do the previews sorry about that my phone's going off about something but we can choose like charcoal to see what the default would look like in charcoal I mean look how quick this is you know folks I mean I'm just you know doing a little bit of a click and you know just give it a couple seconds and update boom I mean I'm done and if you wanted to you can come over here and play with the sliders and everything to try to tweak out how the sketch will look also I will also give this other warning again this is not uh, how to use these plugins I'm just showing basically how fast they are in comparison to now don't get me wrong I like the GMIC plugin I like some of the effects it can do some of the effects I can't really do with what I currently own for plugins however if you're doing this and you're charging for time it might behoove you to maybe get something that will move a little bit quicker and get the job done a little sooner um, unless the client is okay with you know because of what you're wanting to do paying you for that extra time so I'm just going to go ahead and go back here and choose detailed here let's see how that looks real quick okay that, that's fine for this thing I'm just gonna say apply and give this a couple seconds here it's actually gonna put on a new layer for me the reason why I do this and I'll give you this little quick tip guys if you're going to try to run that plugin in Corel photo paint um, for some reason photo paint does not like to try to go on the same layer that you're starting from it wants to create another layer so I've set the plugin up in advance to always give me another layer just in case uh, otherwise you might have some pretty nasty heartaches when you're going to go use photo paint with these filters by the way for those who use curl draw that's a little tip I'm throwing your way but there you go I mean you seen in real time it created another layer it was pretty quick boom I'm done it wasn't no 10 minute waiting time I'm done I can superimpose this if I want to to get an artsy effect like for example I can you know try different things you know real quick with just a layer of blend modes I'm going to you know add it to some things subtract it to some things and just have a ball with this you know some some modes will work better than others you know some won't even work at all as you see I'm just you know real quickly just you know <laughs> sorry get you know it's real quick real simple boom you're done but I'm not going to keep that layer I'm actually going to trash it because we're going to go again do I want to you know do that yet so now I want to go into another filter let's see I can use snap art let's go ahead and go down here and let's use uh, impression which is another plug-in 
<coughs> sorry, that does the same thing that SnapArt does. It's just made by a different company, uses a little bit different logarithms to it, but still it's hardware accelerated. And um you know, this one does take a couple seconds to get the previews up, but once it does, I mean it's pretty quick. And some of the effects here, you know, and the reason why I have different ones is for different effects. Um, you don't have to buy each and every one of these. You know, if one does the job for you, just just use one. But right now it's running against uh, these plugins. As you can see, it already made the Jeep look like it's you know was painted like in a cave somewhere. Of course, if a caveman painted that, they're doing really, really, really well because. Um, as well, well know, you know, their their sketches, even though they're very detailed for for their intelligence level, if they did that, I'd be like super super impressed. Excuse me, with our ancestors. Again, just like with Snap, with the Snap on one, not Snap on. I'm sorry, Snap Art one. You know, you just click one, and then it shows up. You also got different categories over here. You got featured, all effects. Let's go back down to pencil again, real quick. And it's going to render in the previews real quick. And again, look how much faster this is actually moving compared to the other plug-in that didn't quite use acceleration. Now, I'll be thrilled that once they get hardware acceleration for the GPUs and things and get it put into those programs, I'll be thrilled. But, you know, eventually, you know, there are times I do have to go in here and, and kind of use... Um, these plugins because of that. See, look at that. I clicked on one of the presets. It's there. If that's kind of what I want, but I want to refine it, I can click that and it automatically gets me to my settings so I can further refine this this uh, particular image. Now, it also is going to depend on what you want to do, but I mean like painting, for example. I think I did painting on the last one. It's been almost a week and my memory ain't, ain't as good as it used to be and I do apologize folks but I'm gonna choose one that will definitely distort it a little bit and we'll know that it's actually painting just giving these a second to load up and this is in real time guys my computer is not the fastest or the strongest on the market right now so you know it's kind of I guess mid-range is what I would estimate my computer's power at so let's go ahead and go to that one right there. There we go. And just with it, just that quickly, I mean, this thing looks like it was painted with brush strokes. It's painted with different colors and hues of paint. The whole nine yards. I mean, this is really a, a, an impressive kind of a thing to do. Um, so that's what I'm saying. This one here, I mean, these are the differences that it might be in consideration. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of here because y'all have seen that. And I mean, if I was to click OK within a few seconds, it would pop it right back into here. I guess we could go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and just show you how fast that, that runs. Go back in. I should have done that, and that was my bad. I'm not going to wait for the previews because I know which one it was. So I'm going to see if it will let me scroll yet. It's still building previews. You can tell by the little circle that's working and doing something. And also the line up above here will tell you if it's if it's computing something. Let's see, it was oil painting. Now, like I said, if you weren't doing screen capture or anything like I'm doing right now, this will probably be a ton faster for you. I'm just, you know, I'm doing that. That's also taxing the system a little bit, so. All right, there we go. Kind of zoomed in. We can zoom out a little bit here. And you can click on the original and see the difference before and the after. But let's go ahead and say that that's what we want. See that runs, and boom, it's right there. I mean, no, really very little wait time. So we're going to undo this. And again, when you run these filters, if you're doing them on layers, you can blend them and do other things, so you can get some really neat effects. 
The last one I'm going to do, I don't know if I showed it with the, uh, in the other video or not, it, and it's basically using, I believe GMIC has it as a Dreamscape filter, I believe it is. And basically what it's going to do is what this plugin does, and this plugin is called Simplify. And what Simplify does is it smooths out the details to make things look more artistic. As you can tell by when I just hover my pointer over, it gives you a uh, preview. Some of these are just sharpening. Some of these make it look cartoony. And Buzz Sim especially is the closest that will come to what the uh, Dreamscape filter does in uh, in the other plugin in GMIC. But this one here you could do combining. You can see what the base colors are going to look like. You can see what the edges are going to look like if you're using any edges. This one, this particular uh, preset is not. Um, but you can choose, you know, adjustments, finishing things. Um, so, again, you got a lot of neat things that you can do. You can do an, what an oil painting may look like. You can click on that. See how quick it brings it up. A uh, watercolor looking effect, we can click on that and see how quick it brings it up. Again, if this was true watercolor, that was one careful artist because watercolor will bleed. Uh, like I showed in my GIMP one where I took a um, picture of a flower and I made it look watercolory. You know, you're going to have some bleeds and some darkers and hard ones and everything else. But you could do like a wood carving looking effect. Um, and these are just uh, the presets that come with this plugin. Of course, there's other plugin uh, presets. Like if we click on the Buzz Sim one, we only get the Buzz Sim versions. Like here's a black and white one that like that graphic novel one that I did. Um out of that plugin, here's uh Simplify doing it for you now. Photoshop Elements natively has a graphic filter, graphic novel filter, but Photoshop does not. So if you're using Photoshop and you're wanting to try to get that same effect without doing a lot of layers and everything, this may be uh, excuse me again folks, a good way of doing it. So I'm going to say, okay, that, that's basically what I want. I'm not going to adjust it. Again, this is not how to use the plugins. I'm just showing how quick they are in relation. So you, so everybody can get a, um, a an idea. Okay, I clicked apply. And you can see by the progress bar down here, I'm already at, like, 20% just talking right now. So we're just keep right on moving along here. This will take a little bit because it's doing a few... Uh, operations but boom I mean that quick I'm done see there's my normal one there's that and if I needed to I can again you know do a different blend mode that was hideous wasn't it darker color you could do an overlay on it um, or what you can do is is take this move it below the la move this layer up oops this background it won't it won't move I got to oh, wrong thing again. I got to remove that lock. There we go. Now I can use this to put like color down onto here. And see now, now you got a little bit of color. So again, you can use these in combination with layers and other things that the uh, host um, program can use. Now some of the plugins like Topaz Remask Five can be run standard. So if you want to do something real quick and then bring it into GIMP, you can do that. Impression can run as a, as a uh, standalone. Snap Art 4 can run as a standalone. Matter of fact, when you buy the plugins, you get both of those um, that you can do that with. However, Simplify does. It has to have a host program, as far as I know. I haven't seen a an executable yet for it. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're like, hey, I just love my GIMP. I like these things that this man is demonstrating especially on the uh, ones that generate artistic things then or the even the cutout program you're like look that's better than what GIMP does I want to get that then you can run it as a standalone and still be able to proceed on with GIMP without too many issues now I have heard of a plugin that was um, developed that will supposedly let you run Photoshop type plugins in GIMP I have not tried that um, but if y'all had success with that, maybe this will work for you as well. 
But again, this was just a quick demonstration. And I know I've said this several times, beating the dead horse. But again, this was not, you know, how, uh, how to basically. This was um, following up on the tail end of my last video on how much hardware acceleration can speed up an effect. So you guys now see that, okay, here's GIMP. Here's what it can do currently. This is what these can currently do right now. Now, again, supposedly, from what I'm seeing and everything else, they are still working hard on getting hardware acceleration into GIMP. And hopefully the GMIC developers will also uh, put in the acceleration. And once that happens, then they'll be probably just as fast, if not faster than these. So it'll be kind of a wait and see to see if that does happen. So folks, it likes to just uh, take away from here, just to show you the contrasting between the two. Um, I'll actually um, try to put links to uh, where you can get these plugins or look at the website if you're interested. And I'll see you on the next one.